Our next topic is spherical mirrors. A spherical mirror is a curved mirror that is part of a spherical surface. For example, this spherical mirror in my diagram is part of a sphere like this, with its center at C. When I draw a mirror this way, I mean this is the front side, the shiny side of the mirror, and that is the back side, the silver side of the mirror. We say this mirror is a concave mirror because the shiny side kind of caves in. And this axis is called the principal axis of this mirror. Here I have a curved mirror for demonstration. As you can see, it is not really a spherical mirror because it is only curved in one dimension. I'm going to put this mirror here and I'm going to shine a laser beam at it. As you can see, the mirror bends the light towards the center. If I shine another ray that is also parallel to the principal axis, it also gets bent towards the center and uh, they both go through this focal point, F. Actually, for a real spherical mirror, paraxial rays don't focus at a single focal point. The rays farther away from the principal axis meet closer to the mirror. Those rays are closer to the principal axis, meet farther away from the mirror. So images formed by spherical mirrors are sort of distorted. That is called spherical aberration. If we use curved mirrors that are parabolic in shape, all paraxial rays would really focus at a single focal point. So good reflective telescopes or satellite dishes use parabolic mirrors. However, parabolic mirrors are harder to make and are more expensive, so we still often use spherical mirrors. In order to reduce spherical aberration, we can use small spherical mirrors, small in size compared to the radius of the mirror. For small mirrors, paraxial rays would almost meet at one single focal point. Now let's derive an equation for the focal length of the mirror. Let's look at this paraxial ray coming in, hits the mirror and gets reflected and goes through the focal point. The ray gets reflected by the spherical mirror and it has to follow the law of reflection, which means the angle of incidence has to equal to the angle of reflection. Now this is the radius of the circle. The radius is always perpendicular to the tangent line and the surface of the mirror is tangent to the sphere, therefore it is perpendicular to the radius. That means this radius is the normal line for this mirror. Since this is the normal line, that means that this is the angle of incidence and this is the angle of reflection. And these two angles should be equal. Because this is a paraxial ray, it is parallel to the principal axis. That means that this here, we have a Z shape. So that angle there equals to this angle over here. So this angle equals to those two angles all three angles are equal. That means uh, this triangle over here is an isosceles triangle because these two angles are equal. That means uh, these two sides are equal. Now if this is a small mirror, that means uh, the size of the mirror is small compared to the radius of the sphere. That means uh, this angle here is very small, which means uh, this side is almost the same as this. These two, they are almost equal in length. That means that these two are almost equal in length. And uh, from here to here, this distance is uh, r which means uh, the distance over here, the mirror to the focal point is about half r. The distance between the center of the mirror to the focal point is called uh, the focal length. So the focal length is uh, about half the radius. So if we have a concave spherical mirror, we just have to divide the radius by two to get the focal length of that spherical mirror. A spherical mirror curved the other way is called a convex mirror. 
And here I have a convex mirror for demonstration. Again, of course, this is not a spherical mirror because it's only curved in one dimension. But I'm going to put it right here. And I'm going to shine a laser beam at it. So you can see that this paraxial ray gets reflected away from the center. And this paraxial ray also gets reflected away from the center. Of course, these two reflected rays are never going to meet. However, their ray extension back this way would meet over here. And that is the focal point for the convex mirror. Again, the C is the center of this sphere. So this is the radius R, and the radius is always perpendicular to the surface of the sphere. So this R, the radius, is the normal line. So this is the normal line, which means that this reflected ray follows the law of reflection. The angle of incidence has to equal to the angle of reflection. And this angle would equal to the angle over here, because they're the opposite. And this angle here, because uh, this ray is parallel to the principal axis. So that angle there equals to the angle right here, which means that we have an isosceles triangle over here again. If this is a small mirror, that means uh, this side equals to that side. And since this is isosceles triangle, these two sides are equal. So again, we have the half the radius equals to the focal length. The focal length is the distance between the focal point and the, the center of the mirror. Now the big difference between a convex mirror and a concave mirror is that a convex mirror diverges light. It does not really focus light. So the convex mirror's focal length is always a negative number because it does not really focus light. It diverges light instead. In the next few lessons, we're going to study the images formed by concave and the convex mirrors. So you may wish to find a shiny spoon like this one. And uh, one side will give you something that's similar to a concave mirror, and the other side will be like a convex mirror. And take a look at the images formed and change the distances too. Because when you change the distance, you may see different types of images.